Speaking of Win Bigley, in that book, you talk a little bit, Scott, about the second and third dimension of, of how to look at influence or how to look at our political landscape right now. Could you give our audience just a touch of insight into that before they read Win Bigley? So I, I use the term second dimensional thinking versus third dimensional. Second dimension is where you imagine that people are rational and they use facts and reason to, to, uh, to guide their lives. The third dimension says people aren't like that at all. And that would be, I, let's call that the Donald Trump dimension, where he has failed the fact checking apparently 10,000 times, <laughs> 10 thousand times yep. <laughs> he failed the fact check according to his critics now other critics say that 25 percent of the time people say he failed the fact checking that that in itself is fact fake news and you know they're they're over interpreting things but nonetheless if you could have if i could have told you five years ago we're going to have an, a president who will uh fail the fact checking other people will call it lies ten thousand times in two years what would you think was going to happen to the country? Well, most people will say, well, that's the end of the republic. You know, you can't have that. You'll lose trust. Nobody will know what he wants. It'll just be this big old mess. I predicted um, back in 2015 that not only would uh, Trump become president against all expectations, but he would change more than politics, that he would change the way we see reality itself and I, I repeated that, and I said it in public because I said I want to be on 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 record. I want you to hear me clearly. The future reality won't look the same anymore. Not just politics, because people now understand that the ten thousand lies had no effect, no yes. effect. Now that's exactly what I predicted. It would have no effect because we don't use that stuff to make decisions. Instead, President Trump has modeled for us. The alternative, the third dimension. He keeps things simple. That's good persuasion. He repeats them all the time. That's good persuasion. He does things that seem slightly wrong. He shouldn't be saying it in that way. That's a little too far. That's a little too much hyperbole. Those are techniques to make you focus like a laser on his message until you don't even hear other people. What he knows that other people have learned from him in his experience or the experience of having him as president <laughs> is that uh, that we are emotional creatures and that we're, we're on, on you know team instincts that really drive just about everything and and he's teaching us who we are as people fortunately and i say this this is really important fortunately he is a benevolent personality Meaning that, you know, even if you imagine he's selfish, the only way that there could be, you know, a good future for a President Trump is if he does a really good job, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. I'm not reading his mind to say that any president knows that, you know, their legacy is what they're all trying to get. Yeah. So certainly he's using these techniques, which if they were in the hand of a bad character would be seriously bad like as bad as anything could be. I don't want to use, you know, the, the comparison that makes you turn into a joke, but if you were persuasive and you were a bad character, that would be really, really bad. As luck would have it, this president has a benevolent personality. I don't think that's going to change at age 70, whatever. And so he's really taught us how these tools can be effective, used correctly. Well, that, so, that is one. Uh, so thank you for that, because I think that, that that idea of the third dimension is easy for us to forget about and or people operate without knowing about it. And they wonder why things aren't working the way that logically they should. A client not accepting or whatever, another company not agreeing to the contract, employees making irrational decisions and realize there's this third dimension, dimension that's not rational. It's just influence and persuasion. Right. It's stuff like association. What, you know, what is making you think of this when you're thinking of this? It, it, it's stuff like simply making you focus on things because what you focus on becomes your priority. Before the election, I wasn't really thinking much about the border yeah. and border security. Yeah. And now suddenly it feels like, it, you know, of course it's uh, exacerbated by uh, people coming up from south of Mexico, but I, even before that, it became a national thing simply because we kept talking about it. Mm 
Mm. So in my mind, it became important when before I, I didn't even think about it. So he's the master, Trump is, the master of making us focus where he wants us to focus. And by the way, to be fair, because there will be people watching this and say, I'm going to do this again, the same trick, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, when I talk about influence, it's something that you become. It's not something you turn on and off. You mm. Once you learn how to speak in a certain influential way, it's just the, the natural way that you speak. So for those of you who are watching this and saying, ah, he's just a Trump supporter, he's in the bag, he'll say anything that, that sounds good for Trump, I say exactly the same thing in terms of talent about AOC. Mm -hmm. so AOC has all of the talent of Trump, and she's younger, and she's female, which it's any way you want to look at it, those, those are positives right now in terms of getting people's attention. So she has all of his tricks and she's using them even this week. And if you're seeing people criticizing AOC because she used a phrase that was, she went too far this time. This, this plan is totally impractical AOC. You know, you can't do this AOC. It's AOC, you have, you don't know your history. You've forgotten this. And what happens tomorrow? More people will know AOC. More people will be following her on Twitter. More people will be talking about the things she told us was important. Now, mm -hmm. while we're talking about it, she can also soften, you know, soften what she's doing. Good people can get involved and, you know, eventually rational things can come out of it. But she doesn't care too much, nor does President Trump, about the details, the facts, the fact checking, how it made you feel. She's, she's just, she's, uh, She's just amazing at controlling attention. And here I am talking about her, right? And, yeah, and yeah. your audience, some, the, half of your audience just said, AOC, I'm turning off this podcast right now. <laughs> I will not sit still while anybody says anything good about her talents because I don't like her politics. And, of course, it's exactly what people say about Trump. And so Scott, and, we... Uh, I was um, going to say, you, I just... You shattered my universe around observing people differently when you brought forth uh, the new, the freshman congressional photo where she was wearing red in the very front and how that was. And somebody else had red mm -hmm. on, but they had put on a blazer or something like because they realized she was taking the stage. And even that interchange with the other freshman uh, congressperson, even that was some degree of influence that she's playing in that, that third domain. But I think... Corey's got a little bit of a pivot for us on the way that we end up getting influenced here. Well, you know, we talk to our clients all the time about how they're making, they're trying to make their financial futures work out according to their plans. We've got a whole environment out there that has its own designs and wall street gets a lot of, a uh, lot of bad press and, and some of it's rightly so. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, Madison Avenue, the advertising machine that we have in our country are a bunch of very skilled hypnotists and persuasion artists how would how would you you know give our listeners some ways that they can avoid getting drawn into buying the things the media marketing machine wants them to buy or, or go down the path that the media marketing machine wants them to go versus the future thereafter well nobody is uh, nobody is immune from influence so that's that's the first thing you even if you see it coming it still works the example i like to use is uh, it's yourself i'm no fool i know that's basically two dollars but it isn't yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't matter that you know the trick it doesn't matter it's still going to work and you can see that with both aoc and trump everybody knows the trick they're using hyperbole they're yeah blah blah, blah. go down the list we all know the tricks now still works makes no difference that you know the tricks so that's the first thing to know Second thing is what I call the, the talent stack approach to build to making yourself more valuable, both economically and just as a human, is that the more you know about the various fields from, for example, knowing a little bit about how business works, you don't have to be Warren Buffett, but just to know what business models look like, what business people care about, how they think, knowing how an economist thinks, knowing, knowing, for example, things like... Uh, sunk costs, knowing how to compare things, knowing about the time value of money, fairly simple concepts. You don't have to be an economist to know the basics of how they think about the world. But you should also know a little bit about history, a little bit about 
creativity, art, and persuasion. You should study it. If you've studied enough of those things, you have at least a little bit of framework to say, oh, this is one of those. And one of those probably fits this frame, even though they're telling me it's this. Um, so I would say the broader your, your education, the better protected you are. But again, nobody's totally protected. Right. Now, uh, the minimum you can do is to identify a scam early. And I think you can learn to do that. So you can you can identify complete fraud by these tools. Um, and, and specifically, if you're studying persuasion, you can see which tool they used and you can tell what they're trying to make you look away from. You know, so if you know a magician is trying to make you look at this hand, you have some chance of saying, OK, I get it's a music, magician. He's using diversion. Let me look at the other hand. Yes. But beyond that, you know, you don't have complete control uh, over how much you're persuaded. As long as you accept the message, I mean, you could turn it off. That would be effective and just not have exposure to it. But if it gets to you, it's probably going to work the way it was designed because these things are now, you know, the, the big story that people don't talk about, except me, <laughs> is that our ability to influence other people We've always had that. You know, you could go back a thousand years and you'd find somebody who was a good orator and whatever. They could influence people. And then through the 60s and 70s, there was advertising and we could start to measure that our advertising was working or not. But now, because we can measure even a difference in a word in a headline, mm -hmm. we can measure the difference of whether it gets clicked if your image is on the top left, which is the clicky place, versus the bottom right where people look at the least. We know that. We know what words, what colors, what, what everything. And once you know all of those things, you're getting closer and closer to complete mind control. We're about halfway there. But you cannot compare an advertisement in 2019 to an advertisement in even the 80s. In the 80s, it was kind of guessing. And the people who became famous advertisers will tell you that they had skill. But, you know, it was a lot of people guessing, and some of them were going to work. Yeah. And it's like some an people, active asset manager. Yeah. In retrospect, some look like they know what they're doing when it's yeah. a totally random yeah. chance. Yeah, I, actually, that's uh, – I was almost going to use that example, is that uh, if you look at uh, any, any, let's say, fund manager, mm -hmm. an active fund, and they say, uh, look how I did these this last year. I had the best performance. Well, if you were educated – you probably identify, oh, they cherry picked the period and they wouldn't have said this a year ago because their five year plan, you know, their five year performance wasn't so good. And, and then you also say to yourself, well, compared to what? You know, uh -huh. so, yes. so there are things which, if you're educated, you know, to ask the right question compared to what? Did you cherry pick it? You know, did you conclude your fees? Did you include the churn? Did you include the taxes? You know, the, these things become your questions if you have a little bit of education.